Hello and thanks for tuning in. I'm going to show you guys how to make a block using the XY parameter. It's the last parameter I actually figured out how to use. It's quite complicated, but you can create some really useful blocks using it. I'll show you what I mean. So I want to create a block just similar to this one. Basically it gives you the crosshair effect. A block like that is good in, uh, in structural drawings. You'll probably use that for something like showing floor joists. It's exactly what that block's intended for. And just a heads up, this video isn't really rehearsed, so you probably notice me stutter a lot, uh, a few mistakes. It'll give you a good idea of the actual process of making a block, and I'll have to do bug testing and fix some of my actions and whatnot. And also the video is going to drag on a little longer than, than normal. So right now I'm just making some arrows just to have a, or maybe I'll just use the, the default leader arrow. Explode it. scale these a little bit. When you make blocks it's really good uh, really good practices to have things like this. Have them as nested blocks, make them their own blocks, but since this is just for for demonstration I'm not going to do that in this instance just makes it easier to set up your actions because you only have to click one one piece of it. it can't, you can't accidentally stretch it like that or something. Anyways, what I was actually going to do is use the use the leader object to find a different kind of arrow, arrowhead for the top and bottom. Maybe something like that. Style doesn't really matter here. Let's just join that. To make this stand out, I'm going to go to P-Edit, which you can do by double-clicking on a polyline. Type W for width. Oops. Okay, let's turn this into a block finally. One good practice when you're making blocks is to actually take the base point parameter and stick it in somewhere. If you do that later and you already have blocks in your drawing, your block will actually move on you. I'm going to show you a really useful command right now. It's called bconstruction. Basically select an object and hit enter. Hit enter for the default option. What this did is it made this object, it's, it's, for now it's just a reference point. This won't show up in the actual drawing, it'll only show up in the block itself. Really important when you're using constraints, these constraints, sometimes you need geometry like this. And, um, I see many people putting things like this on a no plot layer. 
but then it clutters up your model space it makes it harder to draw for me at least so yeah if you ever want to reference geometry especially for these constraints but you don't want it to show up in models in your actual drawing use that b construction command okay i'm going to change this to layer zero Okay, so we have our first parameter in here. So for this block, I only want to use... Yeah, I only want this parameter to move certain parts of this block. I want this grip right here to move these things, and this grip right here to move this side and the bottom. So I'll go into the properties with that parameter highlighted. Number of grips, let's change it to two. Won't need to show the properties, so I'll go to no. Okay, so let's go to actions. Stretch. Actions, uh, the fundamentals, I cover that in other videos. So check out my channel and look for that. So one important thing a, a lot of people don't know is that if I click on this action, there we go, notice that my properties window actually has the stretch action in here. And, I, and there's some options, <coughs> sorry, some options in here, like a distance multiplier and the type of distance. So I want this to only control objects in the vertical or y direction. So I'm going to change this to y distance. Okay, let's make another stretch. Same thing. I'm going to close the block editor. Let's make, make, make sure this is working correctly. And unfortunately it isn't, but I know it's wrong. I have to take that line out of the selection set. Let's see. Right click. Modify selection set. I don't know. First, we just got to reselect the crossing polygon. Okay, so we got to go to remove. And that that doesn't need to be in there. Basically, all we need in this selection set is, is this, the joist, and that center dot. Okay, let's fix this one. What do we want in this selection set? No, I think I think that's all we have to do to fix that. And we'll have other chances to correct any problems right at the end. Okay, so I'm going to make two more stretch commands. Notice I click on the parameter, then I click on the node. Okay, let's see if this is working half decent. 
Oops, there's still some problems. Okay, so one of these does have a problematic selection set, I believe. Actually, I'm just going to make a new selection set. Pretty sure that'll fix that. This, I think, is working correctly. That doesn't need to be part of the selection set. Okay, so I think this thing's behaving a little better now. Anyways, we need a second XY parameter to drive these, the top edge and the right hand edge. only needs one grip. You know, I changed my mind with this. I actually want it to show, so I'm going to go B construction. Convert. I used the wrong option there. I have to type R for revert. There we go. I'll turn this to a more suitable layer. I'm going to go to my no plot layer. If there is one, that is. There we go. Transparency, let's put that up to 50. 75, I wanted to barely show line type. Let's do, let's do phantom two. There, let's give this block a try now. I have a feeling something's not going to work quite right, but uh, at least you'll get to see the, the bug, the debugging pro process. Okay, let's see. Okay, this bottom is doing exactly what we want. That is. Okay, in fact, this is actually working just like we want it to. Okay, so let's put an attribute right in the middle here. I know people hate long tutorials. I'm up to about 15 minutes, but uh, at this point, you probably learned everything you need to know if you're if you're at an intermediate or higher level of block making, and you just have to fill in that gap, the X Y parameter. You might have a better idea, hopefully, of how to use it now. But just to add some completeness to this tutorial, I'm going to put an attribute right in the in the middle. I have to edit the selection sets, which is going to be a bit of a pain. Make a preset. Let's put tag. 
prompt joist number default j1 how about not annotative I'm actually going to make this block annotative. If the block's annotative, this doesn't have to be annotative. Actually, it's more predictable if it's not annotative. Probably doesn't matter. And also what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a, a move parameter. But I can just use the parameter set for simple actions. Parameter sets always work better. If you're just learning how to use actions, then separate your parameters and actions and, and place them separately. But once you get the hang of it, these are way quicker, especially for things like rotation, flip. Having the parameters and actions is just redundant in, in the cases of those actions. OK, so anyways. Let's just add that to there. There we go. So now I have to add this to those um, two of these. This one. And this one. I'm going to have to enlarge the crossing window too to to grab those two things. Okay, let's see if that worked. So that it doesn't show, I either have to delete this block and reinsert it, or I can type at sync. The default op option here is select, so I just hit enter, select my block, and my, my attribute should appear. There we go. My laptop's about five years old, so when I go in and out of the block editor, my AutoCAD really slows down. I can correct that by closing and opening AutoCAD if you have the same problem. Maybe that might be a possible solution. So we're good to go. So I've never seen an office that actually uses, uses this block. Unfortunately, I figured out how to use this very late in the game, because as you know, for building drawings especially, Revit's really taking over. So a block like this, um, in future tutorials, I'm going to show you how to add macros like you might see up here in my custom ribbon panels, my custom ribbon tab. I'll show you how to insert these really quickly. And I do have a lisp routine, but um, I don't know if that's suited for a YouTube tutorial because it took it takes a whole day to code something like this. I have to offer a big thanks for anyone who watched this video for the full 20 minutes. Uh, usually I try to make these videos shorter, uh, rehearse them and whatnot, but uh, with this one I just wanted to put this together because I know a lot of people are dying to figure out how to use the XY parameter.